Our next speaker is known to many of us in the UK. He is the Party General Secretary and he is the North East Region's lead candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jonathan Arnott. Well, thank you very much. And it's having public meetings like these, isn't it, that shows just what's different between UKIP and the other parties. We go out there, we're prepared to go out there, talk to people, meet ordinary, genuine folk, and find out what people's concerns actually are. We're not here for stage-managed question and answer sessions where we take pre-planted questions from the floor. We're here to talk to people, to communicate with voters. That's the UKIP way. We're a party of real people, not a party of career politicians. Now, as a party, Sorry. <laughs> now, as a party, we are, of course, best known for our opposition to the corrupt, undemocratic, bureaucratic European Union. The power of the European Union extends over so many areas of our daily lives without us even noticing it. Little things like products that have been fully tested <laughs> complying to all UK laws, perfectly safe, disappearing from the shelves, because EU rules require them to be tested again and again at the cost of hundreds of thousands of pounds that businesses simply can't afford. But businesses are closing thanks to that EU red tape, and there is nowhere that is harder hit than right here in the North East, the region with the highest level of unemployment in the country. We're talking about people's livelihoods. We're talking about people's jobs that are affected by the European Union. And yet, when you get one sentence, just one sentence, from someone who's the chief executive of Nissan, it sends everybody into a lot of panic. Forget the fact that outside the EU, we would be guaranteed by treaty to be able to have a free trade relationship with the other EU countries if we wanted to. So the nonsense to suggest that somehow tariffs would be enforced on British uh, on vehicles produced in the UK is simply an absolute and utter nonsense. It's not going to happen. But even so, what it does is it directs us away from the real issue. The real issue of being people being put out of work year in, year out, across every one of a range of sectors by European Union directives, regulation and interference. The European Union paying people to lobby it. Think about that for a moment. As members of the public, how do we get our voices heard? But the European Union chooses which organisations it wants to hear from and then gives them money to tell it what it wants to hear. <laughs> what happened to democracy? Well, we ask that in the UK, but then you think of Greece, and you think what happened when the Prime Minister of Greece dared to suggest that Greece might be better off outside the Euro, and it wasn't 72 hours after that that the Prime Minister of Greece had to step down. This madness has to stop. David Cameron has been promising to renegotiate with the European Union. Can we even say one single stroke of a pen that has been removed from any piece of European legislation thanks to David Cameron's involvement? Of course we can't. Can we say one single power that's come back to the UK? Of course we can't. And he hasn't because he can't. Under the Treaty of Rome, once the European Union has a power, it does not return that power. There's a YouGov poll that showed that of those people who were certain to vote at European elections just a week or so ago, of those certain to vote, UKIP was on 30% to Labour's 32% across the country. Just 2%. We finished second here in the by-elections in Middlesbrough and in South Shields. UKIP must be the only party that can give Labour a run for its money across the North East in May. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, there are no-go areas for the Conservatives. There are no-go areas for the Lib Dems, 
who are a party in serious, possibly terminal, decline. UKIP is a party that is different. There is no such thing as a no-go area for UKIP. Yeah. Our message resounds everywhere with every different type of voter. That's why we are a party that has rich and poor, former Labour and former Conservative, from every background imaginable, all united in one simple desire, the desire to get our country back. So it's a straight fight between UKIP and Labour here in May. The second reason we talk about the European Union is that it affects so many other areas of policy. Immigration. UKIP wants a simple, fair policy. We want to end uncontrolled mass net immigration. We've never said we want to end immigration. What we say is we cannot have the free-for-all that people from 27 other countries can come to the UK with no checks and balances and quite often that is a major impact on youth unemployment in particular in this country that gets so much worse. And of course what we hear is the scaremongering once again. The pro-EU case. Well, what would happen though if you're outside the European Union? What would happen? Would, would, would British people not be able to become expats and live in Spain? We hear that over and over again. I think just looking round where my dad's got a flat house in Spain and there's so many Norwegians <coughs> living in that area and you think yes, the Norwegians outside the European Union are having such a hard time aren't they really? Uh, living there because of course it's in their best economic interests to allow people to bring their money into Spain and likewise when we set an immigration policy for this country what UKIP will do is we will set a policy that is in British interests it's very simple it's very straightforward and if you're a guest in our country we expect you to behave like a guest in our country on tax we propose a simple, fair, flat rate of tax for everyone. And the Labour candidate, Paul Brannan, was in the Sutherland Echo a couple of days ago. I sent him his response. And he was saying that UKIP's flat tax would mean that everyone pays the same thing. How unfair is that for poor people? Now, I don't know if he was deliberately being disingenuous there. Because, of course, UKIP's tax position is that nobody should be paying tax on a standard working week on minimum wage. So if you're earning £15,000 a year, you'll be paying under UKIP around 7% of your income. If you're earning £50,000 a year, you'll be paying under UKIP about 24% of your income. 24% sounds high, doesn't it, because it's more than the income tax that you're paying at the, at the moment. But of course, what we're going to do is we're going to be honest with people. It's not more than you're paying at the moment, because at the moment you're paying you 20% in income tax and you're paying another 12 in national insurance aren't you? If you roll the two into one and it becomes simpler and easier and fairer to collect just as we heard with VAT earlier if you simplify the system so we're no longer the second most complicated tax system in the world then of course we'll be in a situation where, the, where people are not only better off but we are actually rewarding those who work hard which I think is what the country should be doing. Politicians have given themselves a bad name. Don't be the ones to do nothing about it. We need to shake up the establishment and we need to make a difference. And the best way of doing that is to support UKIP at the European elections and in those areas which have council elections this year at the council elections too. Thank you very much. <laughs>